from Budanath, the Tibetan village in Kathmandu. I cannot come to the Kathmandu Valley without a visit to Bodhanath. It is the main community of the Tibetan uh, people here. Uh, many Tibetan refugees live here and of course it is uh, built around this beautiful stupa. It's one of the largest in the world and is definitely the largest in Nepal. And one of the things you have to do when you come here is do a kora or a few koras, which is a clockwise circumambulation of the temple for good karma. And one of the best times to do it is in the afternoon when all the uh, Tibetan Buddhists come out to do their afternoon prayers, rituals, and chanting. Now, I've had a look around. There is definitely some damage here from the earthquakes, but not so much. Uh, some of the stupa, the large stupa is cracked. There's a smaller one that is broken, uh, but the main village area looks like it's almost untouched. Um, they have been doing some renovation here to the uh, pathway around the, the stupa, but other than that, it's beautiful. So let's, let's go for a walk. Let's do a Kora together around Bodhanath. Bodhanath is one place you cannot miss when you visit Nepal. The huge white stupa is one of the largest in the world. It has an incredible history dating back to at least the 8th century. This stupa is located on the old trade route from Tibet, which came into the valley via Sanku village, now about a 45-minute car ride from Bodhanath. Many Tibetan merchants have rested and offered prayers here for hundreds of years. In the 1950s, when Tibetan refugees entered Nepal, they decided to live around Bodhanath. Today, there are over 50 gampas or Buddhist monasteries in the village. Two large earthquakes, one registering 7.8 magnitude, the other 7.3, had preceded my visit in May 2015. Neither had any serious effect or damage on the main stupa. Some in the village attribute the power of Lord Buddha himself for its relatively untarnished structure in the wake of the devastating earthquakes. Stupas are defined as large mound objects that contain the relics of former Buddhist monks and nuns. Bodhanath stupa is said to contain the remains of Kasapa Buddha, a disciple of Gautama Buddha. Tibetan Buddhists will circumambulate, which literally means walk around the stupa in a clockwise direction while chanting a mantra, quite often Om Mani Padme Om. Malas, strings of 108 beads, are carried, each one counted so as to complete 108 chants, an auspicious number in Buddhism. There are 147 prayer wheels around the perimeter of the stupa. Prayer wheels are spun for good karma, many of them with the inscription, Om Mani Padme Om. Buddhanath, as with all Buddha stupas, is filled with symbolism and numbers play an important role. There are the 13 pinnacles at the top of the giant stupa, symbols of the 13 steps to enlightenment or Buddhahood. There are five Buddhas represented in the architecture of the stupa, four at the cardinal points and the fifth enshrined in the center. The five Buddhas also embody the five elements, earth, wind, fire, water, and ether. At the time of documenting Bodhanath for this podcast, repairs were being completed on the walkway around the stupa, so there was a slight detour through an alley in the village in order to complete the kora around the stupa. As I passed through this part of the village, lamas and monks were preparing for their afternoon meditation and chants. Walking through the village with Tibetan Buddhists while the drums sounded from the monasteries was enchanting and inspirational. I was almost finished my Kora, but there was one last stop to make, to see this pilgrim that busks his throat singing or chanting. Another Kora completed at Bodhanath, the Tibetan village. The earthquakes left some damage behind, a small stupa that crumbled, a crack in the large one, 
but little else and only a stronger belief for those who live and worship here in the three jewels or gems, the Buddha, the Dharma, teachings of the Buddha, and the Sangha, the community of practicing Buddhists. As the workers completed the repairs to the walkway, the pilgrims carried on as they have for hundreds of years at one of the most important Buddhist pilgrimages in the world, Bodhanath. As the Buddha himself once said, no matter how hard the past, you can always begin again. Don't forget you can follow me and Far East Adventure Travel on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, Twitter, and Periscope. Follow the links at fareastadventuretravel.com. That's it for this week's Far East Adventure Travel podcast. Thanks so much for joining me. Send me an email, john at fareastadventuretravel.com. Until next time, this is John Sabo. Safe travels and namaste. Namaste.